Hi. Today we will consider um, showing or using IVT, Intermediate Value Theorem, to show the equation e to the 2x equals 2 minus 3x has at least one real solution. Now, uh, before we get to that, I need to remind you what IVT says in Intermediate Value Theorem. It says, basically, if f is continuous over a closed interval a, b, and capital N is between f of a and f of b, then conclusion there exists some C in the open interval A, B, where F of C is equal to capital N. This is in the um, symbol an element of. It means a member. The open interval the set. Again, open interval, we don't include the endpoints. Closed interval, we include the, end, include the endpoints. Okay, this is what IVT says. So, <clears throat> I want to use IVT to show that equation has at least one real solution. Now, IVT requires that I have a function. This is an equation. There is a difference between a function and an equation. They are not the same. An equation has truth values associated with it. You put in a specific value of x, the result is either true or false. A function is just a rule. You put in a value for x, it gives you some output, assuming the function, the, the, the value that we put in is in the domain of the function. So they are not the same. I need to create a function. So the first thing we do is create a function. I'm going to let f of x be e to the 2x minus 2 plus 3x. Basically, I just move everything to one side of the equal sign and that becomes my function. Do not put equal zero. That would be saying that the function is always zero. That is incorrect. This is the, you know, the functional value is always zero. This is my rule. Now, IVT requires that my function is continuous. This particular function has no problems. Exponential functions and polynomial functions are continuous everywhere, so this function is continuous. We will state f is continuous everywhere. We need to write each of these steps that I'm writing. All of this is necessary. Third, I need to find an a and a b. Um, we will always use the value for n to be 0. And now I need an a and b so that when I put in a specific value of uh, n per x for a, my functional value is either positive or negative, and when I put in for b, it's the opposite. So if I put in the value for a, the result is positive. I want some value for b that the result is negative. I will start off by letting um, x be 0, f of 0 comes out to be 1 minus 2 plus 0, which is negative 1. My functional value is negative. That means I need to find a functional value that is positive. And there's lots of things we can choose. The simplest, easiest thing is to just let x equal 1. You want to hopefully pick something that's relatively close to the first value that you pick, but f of 1 in this case is 
e squared minus 2 plus 3, which is, should be obvious, greater than 0. e squared is positive, and of course, negative 2 plus 3 is positive, so therefore, combined, it's positive. Okay, so I now I have an A and B where my value for N is between F of A and F of B. I have a continuous function. IVT then applies. So by IVT, this is my fourth step is to find my A and B. By IVT, this step, there exists some C in the open interval from 0 to 1, that's my A and B, where F of C is equal to 0. This is my value for N. So that means literally E to the 2C minus 2 plus 3C is equal to 0. I literally let x, b, c in my function. And now this means then that e to the 2c is equal to 2 minus 3c, bringing it back in the form of my original equation. Therefore, and a triangle symbol of dots means therefore, therefore c is a solution to the equation. Notice, all this shows is that a solution exists. It doesn't tell me what the value is. It's kind of, you know, leaves you with a sort of bad taste in your mouth at the end. But understand, value theorems are existence theorems. They just show that something exists. Doesn't tell us what the value is. Okay, this would be my Sixth step, by the way. <laughs>